Welcome, everybody. We have a special episode of Story of the Fight. My name is Romero, and that is my boy, Will. What up? And this is where we talk all things combat sports. Today, we're going to be covering our recent trip to one championship, one 168 in Denver. Will, what did you think? Yeah, I mean, first off, just thanks to one championship for giving us credentials. We got media credentials for this event. This is our first like big event uh, being actual like media covering the event. So big thank you for everybody. Yeah, and the media credentials was a massive game changer. We had an opportunity to work side by side with people like Nick Akin, uh, Val, Rick, who was actually uh, shooting photography. And this is my first time ever attending a one event. And so like for me, it's very natural to start comparing it to some of the UFC events that I had actually gone to, some of the regional events that I had gone to. But right off the bat, you could tell that the production, yeah, it's, it's totally different. The production yeah. value is crazy with one. They put so much detail in, like even just the ceremonial wanes have the big LED screen. Uh, like there's little details that they, I, I don't think they cut corners on anything. You know, like they're really making sure everything you see is top notch. Introducing first from Taiwan, the man who heals to no one, Samsa! Yeah, so we get out of the ceremonial weigh-ins uh, and face-offs. The, the, they were sick. We're excited. We get a couple interviews with some people. We talked to Scott Coker. We talked to Henzo Gracie. How like, nice it's is just, Henzo? Henzo's the coolest guy. He gives us hugs. I think he cracked my back when he gave me a hug. Uh, just the <laughs> nicest guy. Chatri called him while he's taking a photo with us. And he's like, hold on, Chatri. I'm taking photos with the guys. This is the nicest guy <laughs> so in the world. Good. So it's just a cool trip all, all, all together. Uh we go to the lobby and we're working on some clips, we're working on this video. Mm -hmm. And then then the next day it's fight day. We decide to walk to the arena for the fight. Uh, what did you think about that? Yeah, so it's a beautiful day. By the way, Nick uh, Atkin joins us. We're walking through uh, the, the city of Denver. Uh, and as I'm walking to the arena, like I continue getting more excited because I know what's about to go down. I start getting goosebumps just thinking about the fact that Ball Arena is right around the corner. Uh, as we're walking over there, we see a massive line of fans yeah. already lined up. And we got there early. Uh, then we see the media tent. And I started thinking to myself, like, this is really happening. <laughs> so that's already building up. And then I'm thinking, can this get any better? And Will, <laughs> as soon as we walk into the arena, I'm getting goosebumps right now. As soon as we walk into the arena, you see the production value amplify, the laser show, the music. It's truly set up to be an entertaining event. It's not just the fights, right? Like the entire thing itself is completely entertaining plus on top of that it's a packed house the crowd's electric so you can't help but get super excited as soon as you walk in and you just feel it yeah and they have you know we watched a few fights the, the fights start off great the first fight was crazy but what do you think about the heartbeat that they play through the stadium dude that's next level so if for, for those of you who don't know they actually have a heartbeat going in the arena throughout the fight and as the round's about to finish up, the heartbeat 
starts going faster and it's like you you feel it and it's almost <laughs> it, it's weird to say this but it's almost like your heartbeat starts syncing up with that and as the the fight continues going the heartbeat intensifies and you kind of feel yourself like intensifying along with it which is yeah. awesome yeah it's one of my favorite things that they do uh and then one of the other th my favorite things is the those giant like video screens that they have those led walls oh. Dude, amazing. So you have the heartbeat, which is already unique to one, right? And then the massive, massive display they go through. Dom Lau does a fantastic job and starts introducing the fighters that are yet to come one by one. So you've already gone through a few crazy fights. You're already like at a very high level uh, when it comes to the intensity. And then Dom Lau brings it to another level. Then you start seeing the fighters that are about to fight. So it increases even more. Absolutely yeah. amazing. They, they put all of them up on the stage at the same time. Everybody who's left, they got Lineker up there, Anglon Song, Haggerty. Uh, like they, they just bring like. all the big guys and, and and they just show you like, hey, this is what's left. Like you still have this massive yeah. card. And it's so cool that they put them all up on stage and you're like, dang, all these guys are about to fight. And I'm about to watch Isn't it Dom all. Lau at the end? Yeah, they use those like same video walls for the uh, like the walkouts, right? And like each fighter gets their own like unique graphics. Like Super like had these like war elephants on there. Uh, they're like super vivid and like colorful. And it just seems like everybody's kind of dumbing down walkouts these days and trying to make sure everyone's the same. Whereas one is just really celebrating and leaning into walkouts and the video screens. They put time into it. Yeah, and the video screens are huge, huge part of it. And so we talked about the personalities of the fighters walking out, Will. How about the personalities of them even just outside of the event? Uh, being at the hotel, we had an opportunity to bump into a lot of these fighters, talk to a lot of these fighters. I mean, we had uh, breakfast with Nico Cornejo and his team in the morning, the day of the fights. That same morning, uh, I bumped into Haggerty, had an opportunity to talk to him uh, leading up to as well. Uh, I mean, come on. How about on Thursday Night Football when that kicked off? We had an opportunity to watch some football with uh, Demetrius Johnson and his dad. Uh, <laughs> The, the interview with Adrian Lee, where we asked him if he'd like to hop on the podcast sometime, he said, let's just do it right now. Post-fight, what's the first meal you're going to have? Ooh. Um, a loaf of bread and pizza. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Loaf of bread and pizza. Sounds like pizza's a go-to for a lot of uh, our talented fighters over here. Yeah, and everybody was super nice. Uh, but, I mean, at the same time, as soon as they got into the cage, they flipped that switch, and they're savages. Like, the first fight at Stupanon versus Klamako... I mean, Estupanon knocks him down, Kalmako knocks him down back, I think knocks him down a second time in the first round, second round they're just trading, Estupanon's going in for the kill, like it's just a, such a crazy fight to start the card, uh, we have footage of that, we have footage of Jojo getting his finish, Adrian Lee getting his finish as well, and it's like these guys are so nice outside of the cage, but then they get in there and they're mean, they're savages. Yesterday you mentioned pizza, today you mentioned pizza again. We're going to settle this once and for all. 
pineapple? Does it belong on pizza, yes or no? I actually like it, you know, it's like, it's not as bad as people seem, they just, they just gotta try it. <laughs> right there with you, man, thank you. Yeah. And so we covered some of the fighters that you had mentioned earlier, Will, and at this point, moving forward, you start going with some of the biggest stars within one, and we start off with none other than John Lineker. And the part that sucks about this footage, the only part that sucks about the footage, is that it gets so loud in there when John Lineker is fighting that the mics literally peak. Yeah. So we, we have footage with audio that we can't necessarily use. So, hey, shout out one for allowing us to use some of this footage and some of this audio uh, just so that everybody can see. By the way, Ray Flores, fantastic. One of the best in the game. Unless you can back him up like this, which is important. Oh, he wobbled. He's a 10 pound. He's a 10 pound turn. Yeah. And now Lineker going on the attack. Oh, look at the body. Look at Lineker. There's a reason why he's known as hands are stone. And you are seeing the brick that he has in his hands. Overwhelming. He's a 10 pound. Lineker needs to be careful here, though. Ace of Tim Powell's a veteran of this. Oh, and that right there, that's exactly what I'm talking about. He can't punch himself out here. They're going toe-to-toe -to -toe here in Denver. Ace of Tim Powell remaining upright. And it all is doing it. Lineker overloving him. Lineker trying to finish off Ace of Tim Powell. I don't think I'm going to bed tonight. 30 seconds left in the second round. What's next? But I do know what's right now. That's fifty thousand dollars. I know you've been waiting a long time to hear you got that bonus from the boss, Chachri Sinyatar. I mean, fucking Lineker is such a savage dude. Like, there's some fighters that just go like pure barbarian mode, and like that was that was. I can't believe the crowd was so loud that it literally clipped our mics. We can't even use the audio. <laughs> uh, but then, I mean, the night just kept getting better. Um, I don't want to gloss over it, but we kind of have to. DJ retires, uh, like, and, and you know, one of the greatest of, to ever do it, arguably the goat. Um, you know, Chatri gets his black belt from Henzo. Uh, just like all this cool shit is happening. It's like a magical. DJ night. gets it, inducted into the Hall of Fame. First one yeah. to be inducted into the Hall of Fame for one. Yeah, I mean, it's just like a magical night at this point. Uh, and there was, you know, there was some turmoil going into the card with some pullouts and things like that. Stamp, Cade, Mikey, all that stuff, and you know, so there was kind of just like, how's this gonna go? And it just fucking, it just like f flowed. It, the flow of the card was so good. And there was just magical moment after magical moment. So it, like it really did deliver. But then we get to the, the co-main and it's Sexon versus Harrison. Just two OGs, two dogs of Muay Thai. And you know, like, you're like, there's no way this is going to disappoint. But then even then it's still, I think, exceeded expectations because these guys just went to war, dude. <laughs>
ทยนั่นนั่นคือจะไปพี่บอสจาติภายบนนาไทยห้าหมื่นเหรียญ So then we end the fight. The fight absolutely delivers from beginning to end. It was absolutely insane. And then at the end of the fight, you have Harrison that lays his gloves down, and everybody's trying to figure out exactly what's going on. Is retiring. He doesn't get an interview. He ends up walking out of the cage. And it wasn't until later on that we find out that he decided to retire because he didn't beat Sexoff, right?、Uh, but just to kind of get you an idea of how all the pieces were just coming together, Will,、uh, we had Frank. Uh, probably one of the most popular interpreters in all of mixed martial arts. I wasn't able to make it to the event, and then they have this guy that steps in last minute and absolutely knocks it out of the park. That's how、yeah. good this event ended up being. Yeah, like th- things could go wrong, and even when they did, it still worked out, right?、Um, and you know, it sucks to see Harrison's career end, but the fact that he went out in just like a dog fight like that, you know, where he gets dropped and then. Immediately he comes back swinging because like that's just who he is, right? That's who he's been his whole、mm-hmm. career. So getting to see him in that retirement fight, even though he lost, like it's still Harrison in there, you know. And it was cool to see one final still、time. going out in the fire. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then and then we get to the main event, and the main event, you know, it's been culminating up until this point. Superlek versus Haggerty, like two of literally they say it all the time. One's got the best strikers. Oh, this fight is pound for pound number one versus pound for pound number two. But like Superlek versus Haggerty. Is another one of those fights. Like they do keep having those fights, you know. And like this is one of them. You know, Haggerty has two belts: kickboxing and Muay Thai. He knocks out Nongo. He knocks out Fabricio. You know, knocks out Lobo. And then Superlek. You know, he's he beats Rod Tang. He beats. I mean, he beats everybody, right? He beats Pompeyak. He beats、yeah. Rod Tang. He beats、uh, Takeru. Like, line him up. He's he's beating everybody, right? And he's going up to challenge for Haggerty's belt. And it's just like two of the best in the world. And they're about to go out there and, and fight in four ounce Muay Thai, you know. And like, there's just so much anticipation, and it, you probably know the results by now.、Uh, but they were absolutely shocking in the moment, right? I think everybody expected like a war or like a very technical fight across most of the rounds. Nobody expected what happened. I don't think. Well, super like did, but、uh, you know, you've probably seen some of these clips. Have us, you know, Ramiro set a camera on us for like our reactions and stuff, and like. This one, it's it it's got it's got our reactions on it, and man, it doesn't just have our reactions. It's got everybody's react. Everybody just jaw on the floor for this one. It's such a cool clip. I'm so glad that we have this. And shout out one, you know, the the finish itself was blocked on our camera, so it's gonna switch to cage side footage that they provided us.、Um, so shout out them for letting us do that. And then it's gonna roll right into the post fight press conference where we got to ask some questions,、um, and then we'll probably be back to to you know. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Here we go.
Welcome everybody to the official 1168 Denver post-event press conference. If you plan to ask questions, please line up with the first three rows. Welcome to the 1168 Denver post-event press conference. At the podium, we have one chairman and CEO, Chatri Sidiatan. Romero with uh, Story of the Fight podcast. Uh, the brand continues growing. The one brand continues growing in the U.S. Uh, it's safe to say that tonight was a complete success. The arena looked full. The fans were electric. Can you share with us any other states that you're looking to get into here fairly soon? Um, several um, state athletic commissions have already approved the global rule set, and Rich Franklin, um, VP here at One, is leading the charge, and, and uh, he's going state by state. And so I think, um, yeah, I mean, he's been very receptive. Um, obviously, we were very encouraged by um, the fans. I mean, I, I don't think – I think only there's two properties – a combat sports property in the world that could fill Ball Arena, and, that, and that's UFC in one, right? That's it. Um, there's no other organization uh, in the U.S. that can that can do that. Um, and you guys saw the fan reaction. It was insane. I mean, the energy throughout the whole night, the cheering. I mean, they just – it was insane. Uh, couldn't hear yourself speak. It was just – yeah, it was just an incredible epic night. I mean, just – for me, I think I, I think for me personally, this was the, the, the greatest one championship event we've ever held for many reasons, right? Because again, we had DJ retiring, we had Liam retiring. Um, it, it just is so much full of magic. Thank you. Here we are, end of the event, just finished up with the presser. It was absolutely amazing. It was everything I thought it would be and more, quite honestly. Uh, the one staff was absolutely- You too. The one staff was absolutely amazing. I mean, we got top tier treatment all the way around. Just couldn't have asked for a better result. Thinking back on the trip, Will, it was absolutely amazing. From beginning to end, it was unlike anything that I've ever experienced when it comes to MMA. And I think about all the different MMA fans out there. Trust me, you want to start watching one. From the superstars that are being built right now. Like, we're watching these superstars become international superstars right now. Get in now right? Uh, to the matchmaking, one of the biggest complaints a lot of the times is we never get to see the top fighters fight each other in their prime. These fighters want to fight each other in their prime right now, in one. Yeah, the production's off the hook. They care about their fans. Just so many things that are going to be extremely memorable. I'm hooked for life. I'm a one fan for life, and I hope everybody else starts buying in as well. And you sound like me now. <laughs> this is how we started. <laughs> I'm bought in. I'm yeah. bought in. I mean, like, look, we, uh, a lot of people probably think we, we're like shilling one super hard right now, but the truth of the matter is like, this is just, this is an event that we went to. I have been to a few one events and I wanted you to experience it because it really is unlike anything else that I've seen. And we've been to a bunch of events, right? Um, they just do it so differently. Like you said, there's so much care put in, into it. The fights are electric. The, uh, the atmosphere, they put so much effort into the atmosphere and that feeds into how you're viewing the fight you know like just the little things they put so much detail into that it's hard to do uh hard to go to an event like that and then not come out with it wanting to make a video like this you know what i mean yes like the reality is we started this show because you moved and i lost like the main person that i like talked to about fights right i just want to talk about fights with people and some of the best fights i'm watching are are in one now and if nobody's watching them, then who am I supposed to talk to about them? So the more people that watch it, the more people I can talk to about these fights. It's kind of selfish, honestly, uh, <laughs> that I want people to watch it, but that's what it is. Um, but yeah, fantastic trip. The whole every night we were just like, it, like, what's happening? How is this happening? This is it's just too good, uh, and it just kept getting better and better each night. Um, and that's due to a lot of people uh, that either helped us along the way, helped us get there, or just treated us very well. Uh, while we were there, you have a list. Absolutely. And I, I want to make sure that we hit on as many people as possible. And if I miss anybody uh, or we miss anybody, I'm so sorry. But we have Sammy, Bear, Cyrus, Ty, Matt, uh, Ray Flores, Dom Lau, Chaudhry, uh, all that treated us, again, like first-class media and mm -hmm. super gracious with their time and just making sure that we were involved in as much as possible. So I, I'm forever grateful uh when it comes to the regular media that's usually there they took us in with open arms and really showed us a rope right nick ack and bell rick our boy pepper uh when they're doing a phenomenal job and then we also ran into some folks who we weren't necessarily expecting to run into but still super kind to us uh henry hoof 
uh, Henzo, Scott Coker, Demetrius Johnson, Adrian and Christian Lee, uh, John Gazali. The list goes on and on. Yeah, everybody was just so cool. Um, and, you know, yeah, I, I, I literally have zero complaints about the whole thing. And hopefully, uh, I mean, what we talked about too, uh, we have a lot more footage that we didn't want to just have this be an hour long thing. Um, but we do have a much longer video. That's just the raw footage that we got, all the usable footage um, of us landing and everything from that point on uh, in consecutive order. So if you want to see that, keep your eyes peeled. We'll post that eventually. Um, but for now, we kind of thought we should make like a point with this video and really highlight mm -hmm. the things that we wanted to highlight instead of just showing you the whole trip, you know? Yeah, and that other video is going to have longer fight clips. It's going to have interviews. Mm -hmm. um, and this video, hopefully this video does one justice, uh, you know, because they, they truly deserve it. So yeah. one last time, thank you very much again, one. And, and a special thanks. Yeah. Yes, special thanks to our fans too, because, you know, like, yeah. we, like I said, we started this just chatting about fights and it's grown to the point where now we're getting credentials at big events. So like, thank you everybody for listening to us talk about fights, <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Crazy. And a special thanks for listening to the special episode as well of Story of the Fight. <laughs>